Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. Well, it had to happen. We have a low medical news week. I mean, what are you going to do? Actually, for a physician, that's a good thing. You, in theory, we don't want to have any news. But because of the, the geophysical world, there was lots of news. So I know mean, many of you are aware there was a, a massive earthquake on the East Coast, very close to New York City where my sister lives. Uh, it was, I think it registered 4.8 on the Richter scale. Uh, the terror that ran through my sister's apartment is really just indescribable. Uh, my understanding is that there was a little drop of coffee that spilled over her, from her cup at the time, and there may have been, we're checking, we're having people come in, one of the books may have slightly tilted. But she's a, now she's a survivor of earthquake. so Janet, we're thinking about you every day. We're all behind you. We know it was terrifying, but we're glad you lived through it. Well, the other thing, of course. And there we have it. Glass is off. Holy moly. Look at how dark it's getting. This is crazy. Look at that. Was we had this little, this eclipse wow. uh, that went all the way across the United States, a total eclipse for, for more than four hours. It just zipped across the country and brought out some of the most ridiculous behavior it, absolutely ever seen in all of humankind. Uh, so there were people out there chanting to the, you know, the, the skies, and there was this one group in Arkansas, a bunch of couples, got 100 couples got together in the Russellville, Arkansas soccer complex to say, to get married, say I do at the, at the time of totality. Uh, and I thought this is the stupidest thing I have ever heard in my life, except I realized their second anniversary won't be until 2045, <laughs> so maybe, maybe they were thinking way ahead of, of us. Anyway, there's some weird, and if you happen to have a meeting, so I was driving along to go to my meeting, and there are all these people standing out there, like staring at the sky with their little glasses on, and it actually looked like one of those, one of those movies of invasion from the invaders from the outer space. I really just locked in looking up. Anyway. Uh, I understand we did have a group of faculty students that gathered outside to uh, do human sacrifice and also watch. Uh, un actually, the, the clouds parted just in time for them to see, and we have some photographs of that, so you'll get to see our, our people acting ridiculous. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's a slow news week. So what's the big controversy? My favorite one of the week is, is a potato a vegetable? You know, I think about this every night. So uh, for those of you who, who may not know uh, uh, what grains are, this is a grain. It has a, a bran. There's bran on the outside and endosperm and the germ. Uh, and grains, it, you know, have been part of all of human existence. Um, of, the, of the structure of the grain, 83% of that is endosperm, which is really just a, it, it just starch. It's a, it's a complex of glucose molecules that basically they're in a way that you can absorb almost all of it as sugar. So, so whole grains keep all this stuff in, the bran and the germ, and processed grains that we know in most flours and stuff take that out. Uh, so it's just almost all carbohydrate or all sugar. So, you know, it, right now if you look at what white flour is in, it's in almost everything we eat. Pasta, bread, cereal, crackers. <laughs> The, the most important for food group, donuts, uh, and you know pretty much everything. So why is there a big controversy why potatoes should remain as a vegetable or now be potentially classified as a grain? So let's talk about what vegetables are. You know, they, the vegetables can be classified by what part of the plant that you happen to be eating. So leaves or lettuce, stem like like would be a celery roots or things like carrots, tubers or potatoes, bulbs or onions, and flowers are like, like broccoli. Uh, and, you know, a mature uh, fruit, in contrast, you know, uh, the other controversy was tomatoes. Tomatoes are actually a fruit, but, you know, they call them vegetables. Another, another terrible controversy in America. So why is, I mean, it's obviously, a potato is obviously a, a vegetable. It's a tuber, and it's, it's real... You know, it's, it's pretty obvious that the botanist, why, I mean, it is a vegetable. But why is there this controversy? Well, the big question that's being uh, undertaken by the U.S. Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee is they reclassify the potato 
Because it, it, in many ways, it acts uh, like a starchy, it's a starchy vegetable. It, it has the same amount of starch as grains. And while this, the potato can be, you know, nutritious, <laughs> most of it is processed into French fries. 50% of almost all. And vodka. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, there's, <laughs> and of course, <laughs> vodka, <laughs> which actually raises its <laughs> calories per gram. But uh, so this is a big controversy, and, and uh, you know we know we can't pass any legislation for uh, anything important in our country. But 14 senators are really have gotten together and are are lobbying the uh, USDA to not change potatoes from uh, being a vegetable to a starch because it obviously has bad implica I mean vegetables to a grain because it has very negative implications. And if you happen to be from a potato growing state, you don't want that. I, it's hard to believe that people get passionate about this, but they actually do. Okay, let's talk a little bit about COVID. Things are looking good. Uh, hospitalizations are down. Uh, all age groups, including over the age of 70, which is good. Uh, even the positive rates for uh, urinary collection uh, from tr uh, outside the country. This is the Travelers Based Genomic Surveillance is also down. We talked about this last week. If you look at what is out there in the rest of the world, it pretty much reflects what we have. JN1 and the, is the dominant strain here in purple, uh, with the most recent mutation uh, just beginning to emerge a bit. In contrast, if you look at the United States, looks like we're a little bit ahead of the rest of the world with JN1.13, that's in pink, slowly but surely increasing. It's now 10% of all the viral strains. And wastewater uh, uh, levels in the United States are low classified as low, and for the first time, I'm happy to report that in Houston, we are finally below the level we were in July of 20, uh, 2020, July 6, 2020. So all that's looking very good, and I just want to remind everyone, these are all related to that BA 2.86 strain that was originally identified in Europe. Uh, we all like, anticipated it be very infectious, didn't do anything until it had one mutation turned into the JN1. That became the dominant strain within months and then now JN1.13 was one more mutation. So from a science perspective, there is actually one kind of interesting study in Nature Immunology that took uh, a bunch of people with long COVID and it took 368 plasma protein samples and just looked at the kind of uh, uh, protein indicators that might give them some ideas to pathogenesis. And, and interestingly enough, there were, sort of, there were three large groups uh, of, of findings. One markers of inflammation in long COVID patients. One, were, one no, set of markers was associated with symptoms of fatigue and anxiety and depression, and one set of markers uh, associated with GI symptomatology. So slowly but surely, we're getting some markers that might indicate uh, why we're getting certain diseases. RSV is also down right now, so we're it's sort of typical entering the summer where all respiratory viruses go uh, drop. Uh, and flu influenza A in yellow and B is also dropping. Interestingly enough, in the TEFI data, that's the, 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 the Texas data, uh, influenza A is sort of in high in some communities and down in others. So we still have a fair amount of influenza A. So someone shows up with a you know, upper respiratory infection these days, it's more likely to be influenza A than it is anything else. Also, there is a, a rise of human metanumavirus, another virus that causes upper respiratory infections. A lot of people I know have had colds. They're, they're negative for COVID. Might be metanumavirus. So that's just sort of emerging, uh, and we'll keep talking about that. So the other cool thing is, you know, uh, I don't know how many of you were watching the um, March Madness, March Sadness this year. No, absolutely no team of interest. I, could, I never even turned on the final. Uh, I mean, Connecticut and Purdue, oh, geez. I think there were 11 people that watched that game. I have to say I was more interested in the, the women's final than the men's final this year. But not to be undone, uh, there is something called stat madness, which your lot, institutions are allowed to submit uh, their most favorite paper into something that looks just like the March Madness uh, uh, bracket. And we have been near, we've, we've done pretty well over the years, but we've never won. But this year, we submitted, uh, our, te our team submitted a paper from Dr. Marasso's group, Dr. Tissa and uh, Dr. Krijin. Krijin. They're the ones that developed the, the wastewater analysis, and, and they're able to look at uh, thousands of viruses that are in the wastewater. Really important, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I think this is the single biggest development from the pandemic. 
they're leaders in this field, and we submitted their paper, and it it did really well. They won. So we won the March stand. This is also very cool. We won the March stand. So we had to beat some pretty uh, interesting uh, studies. There was a, the first round was from GWU, George Washington University. Interesting study that showed that contaminated meat leads to uh, about eight or nine percent of uh, urinary tract infections. Then there was a good paper from Weill Cornell that uh, that was in the second round that looked at developing a compound for, for male birth control. Third round, we beat the University of Michigan, my old alma mater, thank goodness, uh, where they looked at the cost of uh, dementia care. It's been about 20% increase uh, in the state of Michigan, very interesting study. Then there was, a, a, in the fourth round, it was the University of California Irving, Irvine, Irving looking at how early stress can uh, produce changes in brain development and cause future problems. In the semifinals, we faced NYU, uh, which also a very interesting study looked how extreme heat because of global warming and, of course, the city in New York gets hot in the summer, uh, it could lead to a decline in cognition in uh, elderly people. And then the one we in our final was really tough, Stanford. Those people at Stanford are always doing stuff with computers. This was, this was a conversational AI helping type 2 diabetics manage their insulin dose. Okay, good study, but not nearly as important as the winners are people who developed basically the way to follow pandemic. So they were well deserving, congratulations to them. And I wanna end with a couple other shout outs. First of all, shout out to our first year students at our medical school campus in Temple who participated in the Baylor Scott and White powered by you uh, 5K earlier this month. So they, it's the inaugural class of, of our students there and they served as volunteers before, during the event, and completed the run. So that's very, thank you for all of you doing for Central Texas. Also, big thank you to all of our alumni. We had a great alumni reunion, 150 of them showed up. Uh, we had graduates uh, celebrating their 10th year of medical school, and several graduates celebrating their 60th year. <laughs> they made it through. That's the most important thing. And then, uh, of course, a special shout out to Dr. Richard Geis, from the class of 61 who celebrated his 63rd anniversary. In addition to graduating from medical school, he also completed both his residency in surgery and his fellowship in thoracic surgery at Baylor College of Medicine, showing that even at an early age, he was a glutton for punishment. Anyway, have a, have a wonderful weekend, and I hope we have more news next week. Can't wait to see you next week.